Uh, so for number 52, we want to find the volume of a pyramid with height h and um, the base is an equilateral triangle with side a. So what I've done here is I've, um, I've drawn this here in my x, y axis where um, we're going to have all these triangles that are going to go like this, that are equilateral, and then they're going to be summed up from the origin all the way out to h, and that is going to give us a volume, right? So we're basically going to have a bunch of triangles like so, and this is going to form a, um, a pyramid. Think that the, the tip is going to go like way up here, right? Something like that, um, if I were better at drawing. So the first thing that we have to do um, is we have to first find a function here. Uh, as we can see, this line that goes from here to here connects these two dots. And these two dots are basically um, the tip of it, which is at h0, right? Because that distance here is h. And then um, it's on and 0 on the, on the y-axis. And the other one is 0 on the x-axis. And the height is a over 2. And it's a over 2 because there's another half of a on the other side. So the reason that we have to turn this into... Uh, into an equation in terms of x is because uh, the value, the height of this function is basically going to give us the base, right? Or actually half the base. Because wherever it touches this function, that's going to be our height. And then when we, when we multiply that by 2, that's going to give us our base. And then that's going to give us our area. So basically everything is a function. All these triangles are going to be, um, their size is going to depend on where they touch this curve. So it's important that we are able to express this curve um, in terms of y and x so that we can integrate it. All right, so let's do that. Um, so this green curve is just a line, right? So it's line of the form y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is equal to, let's see, 0 minus a over 2 over h minus 0, which is equal to minus a over 2h. That's our, uh, that's our slope, and therefore our line is equal to y is equal to minus a over 2hx, because m is our slope, and then plus our y-intercept is just this point a over 2, where it touches the y-axis. So plus a over 2. All right. So we have advanced in finding a function that relates um, y and x in a. That's pretty nice for us. So now let's think about how we're going to calculate this area. Because the whole thing here is that we're summing up these triangles, right? We're summing them up from 0, which is the beginning here, all the way out to h. We're summing them horizontally, all these triangles. So it's going from 0 to h of a of x dx. And this just means that the area of each one is dependent upon x, which is true, right? Because if we look at this first triangle here, the area is going to be w much bigger than this triangle over here, right? And so that's what we mean by when we say it's dependent on x, because the further that we go into the x-axis, um, the smaller the area is. So let's think about it, then how to express the area of these triangles, right? So they are equilaterals. Uh, a, A, and A. And if they're equilateral, it means that the angle here is going to be 60. So how do we find the area of a triangle? Well, area in capital A is equal to base times height divided by 2, right? And in this case, um, in this case, let me maybe put it in a different color. The base is our A, right? And then what about our height? Well, for this one, what I'm going to do is I am going to... Uh, that. This did not look great. Okay. So for this one, to make a height, it's where it goes perpendicular down. Now, because it's an equilateral, right, it is bisecting this angle perfectly, um, which means that now this new angle here is going to be 30 degrees, right? So because it's, it's 30, um, my, I'm going to call this L. This is our height. So using some basic... Uh, some basic trig, what we have here is that cosine of 30, cosine of 30, remember the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, is equal to the adjacent, which is L, L over A. Um, and in this case, let me just, in this case, A, our area is A, right? Because it's our base times our height, which is L, divided by 2. Okay. So, therefore, A is equal to L cosine of 
30, right? Um, actually, I, I did this, this wrong. Therefore, L is equal to A cosine of 30. And with this, we can say that L is equal to A cosine of 30 is just root 3 over 2. So now that we have an expression for A, we can plug that into, um, for L, sorry, we can plug that in. Therefore, A is equal to A times little a times little a root 3 over 2, and then all of this over 2. Therefore, big A is equal to A squared times root 3 over 4. Cool. Um, so we have an expression for the area of each triangle, right? And now the only thing that's missing is for us to realize that, um, just one second, let me replace this here. Like so. Um, so the only thing that's missing is for us to realize, wait a minute, this A, our, our side, um, how do I remove this? Okay, this A, which is our side, right? Well, this side is just, um, it's just twice the height, right? Because whenever, whenever I go from zero to the height of that function, that f of x, my A is just twice that. So wherever I have A, I just have to replace it with twice my function. Because if I get twice my, because think about it, from here to here is the height of my function, right? So if I double it, I get A. Um, therefore, if A is twice my function, I can just replace this, that A is equal to um, A minus A over 2HX plus A over 2, um, A squared, right? Because that's my function here, twice that. Um, I actually should have done this differently. 2 times this squared so let me maybe let me erase this so that's so a is equal to two times f of x right um so two times f of x is equal to which is equal to two times minus a over 2h x plus a over 2 which is equal to the twos cancel out uh, minus a over hx plus a. Okay, so once we have this, we're ready to, whenever we see a, we're just going to plug this, this back in. Therefore, our area is equal to minus a over hx plus a squared times root 3 over 4, which is equal to, um, let me delete this which is equal to, let's foil it out, root three over four, we put it outside, and then that is a squared over h squared x squared, uh, and then that is minus two a squared x over h, and then plus a squared, cool. So now this is our area in terms of x, right? Now we're ready to integrate. So this is the integral from zero to h, and now I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Uh, I should have done this in a different color, from zero to h. And then basically I'm going to integrate this guy right here. So that's where I'm going to move it to. There. So once I have this, um, I'm basically, and all this times dx, because we're integrating with respect to x. So once I have this, I am just going to integrate it now. Um, and before I integrate, I'm actually going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to... Uh, no, I'll, I'll just do it directly. So that's root 3 over 4. Um, and then when I integrate it, that gives me a squared over h squared times x cubed over 3. And then x squared over 2, that 2 cancels out. So this get, just gives me a squared x squared over h. And then plus um, a squared x. And all of this evaluated from 0 to h. Now, the lower part, when I put 0 in, it's going to disappear, so we only have to worry about the upper part. So this is equal to root 3 over 4 times a squared over h squared times h cubed over 3. Whenever I see x, I'm just putting h minus a squared um, h squared over h, and then plus a squared h. Uh, and then when I simplify this, this is just root 3 over 4. Um, the h's cancel out, so I have a squared h over 3 minus a squared h, that cancels out, plus a squared h, 
which in the end is going to give me, let's see, um, a squared h times root 3 divided by, uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. So these two cancel out. Let me just copy that. That is root 3 over 4 times 3 is 12 times a squared h. And um, that is the volume that we get when we, um, when we take number 52 and then we integrate it and find the volume.